in a classic episode of this video series, I did the calculations for how fast the Earth is spinning. We also have questions about the spin of the Earth, and we're going to do some calculations today as well. We know the Earth is rotating, but why? Why is it spinning? Great question. I want to know why it's spinning as well. Why is everything in the solar system spinning, and why is it mostly all spinning in the same direction? I guess it's interesting to know uh, if it's all spinning in one direction, but I'm also curious, did it always have the same rotation period? Look down on the Earth from above, and you'll see that it's turning in a counterclockwise direction. Will it always have the same rotation period? Same with the Sun, Mars, and most of the planets. Okay, so what I did there was, I'm going to throw in bits and pieces of their explanation of the Earth spinning while we work out some other calculations um, to further the research where they're not touching base on. So like in this article here, which I'll post all the links for, at the bottom we can see here, they're talking about how the Earth is slowing down. And right here they basically make it seem insignificant to you because after 100 years it's like a blink of an eye it's slowing down but let's turn this upon the numbers that they give us because remember they're talking in millions and billions of years so we're going to go from there the conservation of angular momentum so um with the angular momentum uh it goes into the inertia net i'm going to post a link to this page here uh this basically goes through it all um and about uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle as well. Uh, take a, a look at that, that's worthwhile read. Um, but you wanna take a look at this just to catch up to what exactly they're talking about when it comes down to angular momentum. This is the conservation of angular momentum at work. Also included in the research, I'm gonna put in this Earth Rotation Wiki article so that you can read up on um, everything they have about the actual earth spin because we're going to be using it to uh, reference numbers and stuff as well but um, that link will be below as well they inherited the rotation from the overall movement of the solar system itself they inherited it but the um, article here that I'm going to post on there as well is showing that we are slowing down um, four centimeters per year uh, and from the rotation or the rotations you'll find out that that's due to the moon pulling on us. Collapsing proto-solar system with its averaged out particle momentum began to spin faster and faster. So let's convert the four centimeters into a meter find out what that is first. I'm doing that here. Without any unbalanced forces acting on them the inertia of the sun and the planets have kept them spinning for billions of years. And what we'll do here is convert the meters and see what that is in kilometers. And they'll continue to do so unless they collide with some object billions or even trillions of years in the future. This is just to show the, um, what the conversion in kilometers actually refers to as a, a number with the decimal point. Uh, it, all it was was five decimal points, right? So um, this is the reflection uh, for the actual uh, kilometer distance that we'll be using our calculations. It continues to spin because of inertia. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go over to and get the Earth's circumference. And there it is. It's 40,075 kilometers round. And we're going to enter that into the calculator. The reason it's all the same direction is because they all formed together in the same solar nebula billions of years ago. So now what we need to do is take that uh, calculation that we converted to the kilometer. So that's the amount of kilometers that we're losing per year. And see how many years it's going to take to um, slow the Earth rate down. So we're going to divide that into the Earth uh, circumference. And that's what we're going to set up here. It can't be a coincidence. Okay, so this is interesting. So just over a billion years from now, the Earth should come to a dead stop by their calculation. I mean, 
and this video where I cut clips into um, you'll hear them say that it's for billions and billions more like I don't get how they didn't do the math here but we'll continue on um, and see how this affects the past 4.54 billion years ago our okay so we're gonna start with uh, what they say so it's confirmed here 4.54 billion years ago what we're gonna do is enter that down into the calculator and what we're gonna do is do what they always do and they say that they can use math to roll back and see what happened in the past so we should be able to do the same thing by using their numbers we're gonna roll back in the past and see how fast the earth had to be going when it first started and uh, see if that even makes sense to what they tell us as the solar system spun more rapidly it flattened out into a disk that's funny a disk eh? but anyway um, what we'll do is we're going to use our original conversion of the kilometer and instead of dividing because we're going back in the past we're going to time so we're going to use the opposite um, because, of course, past, future, future, past, they're opposite of each other. Same with the calculation. Galaxies around rapidly spinning black holes, and we even see it in pizza restaurants. I sure do love their pizza, eh? Um, but anyway, so our final calculation here, we get uh, 181,720 kilometers that we're going to have to have traveled extra. So now what we've got to do is take the Earth's circumference and divide that in that because the earth never uh, changed size or we'll presume that never changed size. It can't be a coincidence. So now what we have is the multiplier that we're going to use to take the current speed of the rotation of the earth and use that multiplier to figure out exactly how fast it was going 4.54 billion years ago. It can't be a coincidence. So we go back to the Earth rotation. We scroll down to angular speed. Uh, we look through here, and um, you can see that the most accurate uh, speed that they uh, list here is the 1,674.4 kilometers per hour. So we're going to be using that as our um, speed, our current speed, and then use our multiplier to. Um, times that speed to average the speed of what it was 4.54 billion years ago. So are you still wondering why the Earth does spin? Well, I definitely have my questions, that's for sure, because we're getting over 7,000 kilometers an hour spin at the start of the earth spinning if it has been slowing down four centimeters a year since then we'll stop spinning a billion years from now so using their numbers we've just calculated the lifespan of our planet as far as the spin it can't be a coincidence you know and the thing is here we take that number let's just see you know the speed of sound and compare it i mean we're looking at um an incredible speed for this planet to have been spinning back then and he even said that we you know the um, angular momentum and the inertia would you know sped it up made it faster 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 yet here we are slower are slowing down over time and then when you look at this you know we're at over Mach 6 back then for a speed there's no way that that was happening so their calculations prove if we're using their numbers we can actually go and prove that if we roll it back, roll it forward, that they're not actually making sense. They try to make it um, make sense by using big volumes of time and space, but that's not going to correctly answer their dilemmas or their uh, paradigm if we actually research those numbers. So um, if anything, take this research and make sure that when you first hear something, research it further. Try to find out all the answers to all the questions. Ask the questions to start off with. Um, that that is the biggest key here to unraveling this um, this lie to bring the truth forward we gotta do our research we gotta go into this and figure it out for ourselves no one else is gonna do it for us so we gotta do it spins 
because it formed in the accretion disk of a cloud of hydrogen that collapsed down from mutual gravity and needed to conserve its angular momentum. So everything about this video is about the Earth spin, but as I was researching this, um, <clears throat> I got into looking at the other planets to see what was the fastest uh, spinning planet in their um, model. And what I found was that Jupiter was our fastest, or their fastest uh, spinning planet as far as our model is concerned. It's supposed to be spinning at 43,000 kilometers an hour at the equator. Now, what I did here was I'm overlapping uh, images from the original Voyager mission when it passed Jupiter, the black and white. The colored is uh, a mission that uh, happened after the Gemini. So, what I want you to look at, like the original Voyager picture, you can see as it's rotating. Uh, go back and pause the video or, you know, watch it here and you'll see like this blue picture here uh, showing the eye spinning, that uh, animation there. And then you see it here turning and you don't see the eye spinning as the planet's turning. So, um, we're missing motions in these clips and these are supposed to be from the past, from actual missions that went out and beyond our solar system because Voyager 1 supposedly is already out in the heli heliosphere. But I have doubts, of course, with all of this because to me, um, when you take your uh, unindoctrinated mind, once you get free of the paradigm of that things could be lied to to you even from people of authority you can go out and then start looking at things with fresh eyes and start to pick it apart because before what you were doing is you blindly disregarded any information that went against the authority without question so you almost are settled by lying to yourself to accept what you've been told now that's a in my opinion a horrible paradigm for us to keep ourselves locked into because in a way we have the keys to our own cage we just got to wake up and unlock the door so what I want you to do is really evaluate all this evidence don't just throw it away and go there's a reason for it or someone smarter knows the answer because that's where you're falling apart that's where you're not unlocking your own cage wake up take a look don't listen to anybody. Don't even listen to me. Go do your own research. I mean, that's what I've done. And I'm so rock solid in my foundation because I've actually done the numbers. I, I sit here every day for hours on end investigating this. Um, and I will keep investigating until we get the truth out. But anyway, my brothers and sisters, God bless. I want to talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.